Hello and welcome to the virtual college exploration for all North and South Carolina students. Thank you all for joining us this evening. The virtual college exploration is sponsored by the Carolinas Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers, CACRO, and StriveScan. Just a couple quick things I want to run through before we get started. How do you ask questions? So uh, you have access to a Q&A button on your screen. Your camera and microphone are turned off, um, so our presenter cannot hear or see you. However, you do have access to that Q&A feature throughout the webinar, so uh, please feel free to use that um, feature and um, we will um, get to those questions as, um, as possible. So um, you can also sign up for more sessions. There are sessions happening this week and um, I believe into early next, um, but mainly this week, um, you can sign up for sessions at cacro.org, C-A-C-R-A-O.org. Um, and if you are um, hoping to come back and re-watch this recording, or if you have friends that were not able to watch live tonight, uh, you can let them know that the recording will be available at cacro.org. That's again, C-A-C-R-A-O.org. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to our presenter. Awesome, thank you so much for the int introduction. I am going to start off by sharing my screen and introducing myself a little bit. So, hello, my name is Patrick Dean. I'm one of the admissions counselors here at Suffolk University. I just wanna say thank you all so much for taking time out of your day to join with me and listen about the um, information session and just learn a little bit more about our university too. So when I start talking about Suffolk University and really jumping into the presentation, I kinda of wanna bring up the number one question that probably brings us all here today. And that's why Suffolk? And before I go into my presentation about all the facts, statistics and everything like that, I wanna bring in some of our students and kind of set, show you what students have said and what drew them to the university. So first things first, we have Abby right over here. She actually just graduated last year with her Bachelor's of Arts in Graphic Design. And one thing that really drew her to Suffolk was that we are located right in downtown Boston and she originally came from a small town. So she really liked the big, big city aspect and she was really looking for that change. Next student we have right over here is Matthew. I believe he's going into his senior year right now, so a super exciting time for him, gonna be graduating pretty soon. He majors in environmental science, and one of the biggest reasons why he wanted to come to Suffolk was our proximity to the Massachusetts State House and other um, internship opportunities that we have in the city. Once I finish the presentation, I'm gonna pull up the virtual tour, uh, tour super quick, just to kind of show you where our campus layout is and what our campus actually looks like. And finally, we have one of our former ambassadors over here, Morgan. She just graduated in 2019 too, with a degree in information systems and marketing. She really liked the small class sizes that are offered at Suffolk University and the individualized learning opportunities while still not being on an isolated environment and still having all of Boston right at your doorstep. So really we kind of see one common theme here between all of these students, and that really is Boston. Our location is something that's going to add so much value to your academic and social experiences. But we're not the only school located in the city. I believe right now there are about 35 universities in the Boston area, and every single year, I think about 250,000 college students descend upon the city. So what really sets us apart? Number one, we're the only university located right in the middle of downtown Boston. So as a student, you're really immersed with all the, with really such a fantastic culture of arts, entertainment, dining, sports, and a bunch of real world experiences around you. And two, here at Suffolk, we offer a true university experience. But what does a true university experience mean besides just going to class every day and just doing your major? Well, for one, a true university experience means we have over 70 undergraduate programs between the College of Arts and Sciences and the Sawyer School of Business. Between those two schools, we have just under 5,000 undergraduate students on campus, so we're about a medium to small university. If you throw in our graduate students and our law school students, we have another 2,000 students on campus for a total campus population of just about 7,000 7, total students on campus. And not only do we have access to all these majors, it's very easy to take different majors between different colleges. For example, a lot of our students who major in something like graphic design that's gonna take place right here in the College of Arts and Sciences end up getting a couple classes, a minor, or even a double major in something like marketing in the Sawyer School of Business to really diversify their background a little bit and add more of a skill set to themselves too. 
So we highly, highly, highly encourage our students to take different classes between the different colleges to diversify your background a little bit. For example, just using me as a personal ex as experience, I was a criminal justice major in college and I got my uh, minor in business management. That actually led to me being in an MBA program right now. I would have never even thought about that unless I picked up business as a minor. A part of a true university experience also means we have 19 NCAA Division III teams on campus. I actually work very, very closely with athletics. It's probably my favorite thing that I do in my office. So right over here, we have the East Boston Sports Complex where a lot of our teams play. We also have the Ridgeway Gymnasium. And this is actually one of my favorite pictures right here. Every year they do a thing called Frozen Fenway where they take Fenway Park, freeze over the uh, ballpark and put an ice rink in there and let some local hockey teams play in the park, do some competition. So this is our team actually skating right in historic Fenway Park, which was a phenomenal opportunity for them. We are moving into the, coastal, uh, the Commonwealth Coastal Conference. So it's gonna be a brand new, even more competitive conference for us, which is super exciting, especially since our team started winning championships last year. Our uh, women's soccer coach was voted coach of the year. And regularly our student athletes have some of the highest GPAs in every single conference. So we're super excited to make that transition. If any of you all are interested in athletics, please, please, please let me know. I'd love to get you in touch with our coaches and talk to you about some of our D3 programs. To shift a little bit back to academics, we offer 11 accelerated master's programs here. So that way you can start taking graduate classes during your undergraduate year, and you can really work on getting your BA or BS and then transitioning for an extra year to get an MA or MS for a total program length of five to six years. Or you can even try out our six year law program. We do you three years of undergraduate studies and then jump straight into three years of a JD program and you can get your bachelor's and juror's doctorate in a total of six years. We really want you to think about your academic journey as a whole when you come to Suffolk and not just what classes you're taking and what your major is going to be, but how it can lead seamlessly into advanced degrees afterwards. Again, using me as personal experience, I did four years of undergraduate studies and now I have three years of uh, graduate school in front of me. I wish I just would have shrunk it down and did it all in five years in one, it would have been so much easier. And really it's all about an education that takes full advantage of the city that surrounds us. Our classes regularly venture outside of the classroom into the different companies, civic organizations, government offices, and basically everything that surrounds our campus. We truly like to focus on hands-on experiential learning here. To show a couple examples of them, we have one of our students right over here, her name is Olivia. She actually works in our own TV studio that we have on campus in Studio 73. Again, I'll show you on the virtual tour, producing segments that get aired on NECN, which is like the New England Regional News Network. So our students are being televised throughout the entire region, giving updates on what's happening on campus and what's going on in the city. We have some of our accounting majors over here actually doing a tax prep clinic to help some of our staff, international students and faculty file their taxes. It was definitely something that I should have taken advantage of filing my taxes this year because I ran into a couple speed bumps and struggles with mine not knowing how to fill it out. So I'm definitely gonna take advantage of our students' help next year. Or we have some of our marketing majors actually doing market research and strategy consultation for some of the downtown businesses that we're partnered with here. They're really putting their knowledge to work and taking what they learn in the classroom and applying it to the field that they want to go in to really help build their confidence and build the skill set that they have. And like I said before, experiential learning is a huge focus on the university and students really make that known through the internships that they get. Internships are really a vital part of coursework and study at Suffolk University. And our students are perfectly situated to take advantage of all of this, whether it being just a short walk or tea right away. Here's a short list of some of the organizations that many of our students have gone on and gained internships at. And really it's again, our location that makes all of this possible because many of these employers are our next door neighbors. They know Suffolk University, they know what we're about and they know what students they're getting too. They're getting competent, hardworking students ready for a challenge and truly eager to learn by doing and going hands-on right away. Another great thing about being downtown is that our alumni are just right down the block from us most of the time. Is it, it really opens up a lot of networking opportunities and our alumni find it very easy to come back to campus and really connect our students with different internships in the city and just personal and professional experiences in the city. They're probably one of our biggest resources outside of our faculty members for student connections with industry. 
And here's really the crazy thing about all of this. You get all of these resources, but you're not gonna have to sacrifice your identity. Right now we have an average student faculty ratio of 15 to one and an average class size of just about 21 students. So really here, you're never gonna be sitting in the back of a 300 person lecture hall and your professors are gonna get to know your names your ambitions and your learning styles. So you have that opportunity for individualized learning. And while we have the roles of teacher's assistants just to do exactly that, assist the professor, they are not teaching any classes. So all of your classes are gonna be taught by our Suffolk University faculty members. So really here, you're gonna be getting the best of all possible worlds. You're gonna get all the resources of a university and all the attentions of a smaller university combined with all of the opportunities in a city where you're still gonna be a name instead of a number. And that's an extremely unique position to be in. So I covered a lot about the academics and everything, but what else? And what else do we offer here at Suffolk? And really there's so much more and there truly is a world of involvement here. Coursework is obviously gonna be the cornerstone of any college experience and education, but it's not the only aspect about college. There are so many other things to get involved in here at Suffolk that will really expand your horizons and hone onto those adaptive skills that will make you successful in any field you wanna go into. Communication, teamwork, and leadership are vital. To start talking about some of the experiences that we have, first, we have just over 100 clubs on campus. Here's a list of some of them, and this is really just the tip of the, uh, tip of the iceberg right over here. I believe the Video Gamers Army and the, I think it's gonna pop up in just a second, yep, Student Government Association right over there. Those are probably two of the biggest clubs that we have on campus. I like to say, if you have any type of interest in anything, odds are you're gonna find a club that shares that similar interest with you. It's probably the easiest way to start getting involved on campus and the easiest way to start making friends right away. My favorite day on campus is our engagement fair. When we have students, uh, all the clubs set up all their tables and all the students descend on those tables and start really getting involved and seeing what clubs there are. It's, it's my favorite day because that's where you see a lot of our first year students start to come out of the shell, start to be comfortable on campus and really start to gain those opportunities and experiences with our other students. Community service here at Suffolk is really a way of life and it's written right into our mission statement. I've said so many times on this presentation already how much Boston gives to us. So we wanna do everything we can to give back to the city around us. Our students have done 20,000 hours of community service in the city. And it's something that we are extremely proud of our students for. And involvement can happen through your classes, through some of our service learning courses, through our Center for Community Engagement, through some of the student groups that I've already talked about, or even just going out and doing it on your own. If you're passionate about your ideals and passionate about what you wanna do, we don't want you to wait until graduation and we're gonna do everything we possibly can to help you make differences while you're still an undergraduate student here. To go a little bit deeper into some more activities we have, we have, an act we have a program called the Journey Leadership Program. This takes students on team building and journey leadership adventures all throughout Boston, Washington DC, Florida, and even down to Barbados. We also have alternative winter and spring break programs that go even further than this, like going down to Cambodia and working with Habitat for Humanity. We feel so strongly about the benefits of these experiences that we provide them at minimal to even no cost for our students. Again, I can tell you as a recent college graduate, this stuff does not pop up all the time. So absolutely take advantage of this stuff when it's in front of you in college. It's probably one of my biggest regrets in, uh, th through my time in college is I never took advantage of all these opportunities and I never really got to travel when I was an undergraduate student. I didn't realize how easy it was until my senior year. So absolutely look for those opportunities and take advantage of them when you're an undergraduate student. Another great thing about being in the city is it really provides the perfect backdrop for campus diversity. Just as people come from all over the, uh, to Boston from all over the world, people come from all over the world and all over the country to live and work at Suffolk University as well. Right now, I believe about 19% of our student body is made up of international students making us the third highest percentage of any uh, university in the country. And there are more than a dozen cultural affinity organizations here at Suffolk, all run by students, all offering welcoming spaces and promoting and sharing unique qualities that our students bring to better our community. And our students really do span the spectrum of race, gender identity, sexual orientation, political persuasion, income level, and nationality. It's a community that makes perfect sense in a multicultural international city like Boston and a very natural fit for our students that helps prepare them for life in a world that is built the same way, filled with different backgrounds, perspectives, peoples, and ideals. 
and start and kind of talking about that worldview too. We are very well known for opening up the world to our students through many of our global opportunities. To start talking about that, I'll cover our study abroad opportunities. So right now we're partnered with 50 universities all throughout Europe, Asia, even going down to Australia and South America and in South Africa that you can go to for a traditional semester or two semester study abroad programs but sometimes a study abroad won't always fit into your schedule. So you have other options that you can take advantage of. For example, you can study abroad for just a summer through some of our programs. You can join a week-long faculty-led study tour or take courses that involve travel seminars that also just last one week. Another option that you can do is take advantage of our journey leadership program and alternative spring breaks that I was talking about. And probably the easiest way to gain an international experience at Suffolk is going to Suffolk, but in Madrid. We actually have our very own campus located right in downtown Madrid. It's our very own campus, it belongs to us, so everyone working there is Suffolk staff, Suffolk faculty, Suffolk students. You have the option of starting your college education at Madrid or going to Boston. If you decide to go to Madrid, you can go there for up to two years, unless you do a major like international relations, where you can spend all four of your years in Madrid. Although all classes are gonna be taught in English, you will absolutely be immersed in the Spanish language and the Spanish culture around you. And your travel opportunities will multiply as well with so many optional guided tours all located through different uh, space, places in Spain. Finally, Madrid is also the home to our week-long Global Gateway program. It's probably the easiest and least expensive way to take spring break in Europe, and it's open to all Suffolk University first-year students in their spring semester. Again, like I said before, these are those opportunities that might never pop up again to take a spring break in Madrid from anywhere. I think the cost is from zero to $500, depending on where you fall on the scholarship scale, and that's your flight, housing, food, everything. So you get that opportunity to spend your entire spring break in Spain and really get that experience and opportunity. So it's something I always push on students and be like, at least look into it and see if it's possible for you because it is such a great experience. So now that I covered everything about Suffolk University and what you can do here, the next natural question is where next and where does this lead you? Well, first things first, you're gonna graduate in pretty good shape. Right now, 99% of our students are working full time or in graduate school, school within a year of graduation. And 90% of our students are employed and relevant, are, are employed uh, and relevant to their career goals. So what that really means right there is our focus on experiential learning and getting students research opportunities and hands-on opportunities and fields they wanna go into really shows and really directs students into to their fields that they want to go into. So it's something that I'm very proud that we have to offer and something that is big when it comes to college too, because a lot of places now are looking for your degree plus a couple years experience with that degree. So instead of getting the degree and then getting years of experience afterwards, we want you to get the degree and experience at the exact same time here. Right now we have just over, I believe it's 84,000 alumni who live and work in just over 140 countries. And they're very well known for making their voices heard in different areas of government, media, communications, finance, entrepreneurship, the arts, every field that we go into here. And here are some of the top employers that I have. And our students really move on from the university with maturity, interpersonal skills, and real world experiences to start making immediate contributions to their organizations right away. And our students are ready to hit the ground running in a professional environment. There is so much to the stuff that Suffolk experience that leads to these outcomes, whether it be experiential learning, mentorship of faculty, mentorship of alumni. But one resource that I haven't talked about yet is the Career Development Center. So basically from your first day on campus, all the way up like years and years and years down the road when you finally do decide to retire, you're gonna have the resource and expertise of our career development staff at the ready to help you advance your career. They connect students with credit bearing internships, they bring employers to campus for job fairs and networking events, and they offer one-on-one -on -one consulting, resume assistance, and proprietary job search tools. These are all resources that are available to you, not just during your time here as a Suffolk student, but like I said, your entire career. And I always say this in presentations too, through your classes and experiential learning, you're gonna know your field like the back of your hand. But the next step is you gotta convince employers that you actually know your field like the back of your hand. So going to the Career Development Center, Center really helps you develop those skills to market yourself, sit down in an interview, and tell the people that you wanna get a job with what you know, how you know your skills, and how you can effectively apply, apply those skills. So to really make yourself a well-rounded professional, I always, always, always recommend go, going to the Career Development Center at least once. You are really doing a disservice to yourself if you don't go there at least once. And talking a little bit more about those employers, many of them, especially those in Boston, 
hire Suffolk graduates because in many cases, they know them already. Maybe they had them as interns, invited them to some of the job shadowing programs, met them at the fairs that I was just talking about, met them through consulting projects, faculty, alumni, all of these different things I've talked about through these presentations. And really these organizations all act as an extension of the Suffolk University community, and they play a crucial role in all of our students' education a big chunk of the real world is woven right into the fabric of the university and it really helps students make the smoothest transition possible from college to their career. In Suffolk University, it really offers an experience that gets you right into the action of the city and the world around us and we don't make you wait. But at the same time, we wanna provide you all of the tools and all of the opportunities to make differences in ways that are gonna be meaningful to you. We've been doing this for just more than a century now, really enabling students to make valuable contributions to the world, regardless of where they come from, who they might know, what they might look like, or what their financial resources are. And we wanna see what every student can bring to the table. So that's my whole spiel about Suffolk University, everything we offer and everything in that realm. So now I wanna talk about some very important next steps and a little bit about the application process. I am the, I am the admissions counselor for North and South Carolina. So at the end of the day, if you do decide to submit your application, it's gonna land right on my desk. So I always love to, at the end of the presentation, I'll provide my contact information so that way you all can email me. And in the question and answer section, please, please, please feel free to ask me any questions. I'm here to help you out as much as I can. But to start talking about some important deadlines, November 15th is gonna be our early action deadline and February 15th is gonna be our regular decision deadline. When you're applying to the university, you can either fill out the common application or the Suffolk application. If you have a bunch of schools on the common application already, just tack us on, it'll make it so much easier for you. When you're applying, we require one letter of recommendation, we require the essay, and that's pretty much all the extra requirements that we have. We do not require the SAT or the ACT. We are test optional. So if you feel like your test scores don't represent you as a student and you don't feel like your test scores will help you, don't send them to us. You don't have to do any additional essays. You don't have to do any additional short answer. And you can still get the top scholarship and you can still get into the honors program. It will not hurt you in any way, shape, or form. If you do decide to submit test scores, we are self-reporting. So you don't have to go through the college board to send them. You can even send me an email of your test scores. The one big thing I ask is please make sure your name is on the test scores because I've gotten so many emails that like, oh, here's my test scores and there's no name on them whatsoever. So please make sure you put your name on it so I can actually link it to your account. Um, when, uh, when we're talking about the application too, like I said before, you can either apply directly to Boston or Madrid. When we're looking at the average application, we usually see an average GPA of about a 3.2 to a 3.3. If students submit test scores, we usually see an average SAT of about an 1100 and an average ACT of about a 21. When you submit your application, you're automatically considered for one, admission into the university because it is the admissions application. If you're gonna be invited to join the honors program, so there's no separate application for honors, if you're gonna receive merit-based aid and what type of merit-based aid you're gonna get, last year we were able to give students anywhere from 5,000 all the way up to $22,000 in merit-based aid. And if students need to be admitted into any language-based competency programs. Finally, there are some additional ways to be admitted to Suffolk University, for example, through our SU Advantage program. So this is a program where maybe we see a student who had a down semester or a down year, but the student shows a lot of potential and they may have a bit of a difficult transition from college or from high school to college. So we put them in the SU Advantage program, give these students a bunch of additional resources and help them make that transition possible. Many of the students who have gone into that program have actually gone out and graduated some of the top of their class. So it's probably one of my favorite ones to get involved in. To talk a little bit about financial aid, right now 92% of our incoming students received some type of financial aid last year. And like I said before, all applications are automatically considered for merit-based aid. We have two tools on our website that can be super helpful for you. One, we have, the merit, we have the merit scholarship estimate. That is a tool where you put in some basic GPA, SAT, if you choose to submit them, and we can give you a number of what your merit scholarship may look like based on your application. We also have the um, net price calculator. The net price calculator is a tool where you put in some basic financial information, submit it to us, and you can get a good idea of what your financial aid package might look like. So I always, always, always recommend taking advantage of those tools so you can see what the actual cost of attendance would be like to come to Suffolk University. 
Here are some important deadlines to keep in mind when thinking about financial aid. For all incoming freshmen, March 1st is going to be that deadline, so make sure you're getting it in by then. We only require the FAFSA, no CSS profile, anything like that. So just fill out the FAFSA on FAFSA.gov. It is free to file, so you don't have to go to any website that has you pay to fill it out. FAFSA.gov is the free place to go. You can see our FAFSA code right over there, 002218, or you can just type in Suffolk University and it'll link it right up to us. Um, that's pretty much everything I have on the presentation. I'm going to swap my share super quick and head on, actually, let's see. I'm going to end the share right now. And also at this point, if you have any questions for me at all, please, please, please feel free to type them in the question and answer box. I'm here to answer any questions that you might have at all. So please feel free to uh, ask them to me and I can help you out with any questions. Right now, I'm going to be pulling up the virtual tour. So let me pull that up super quick. There we are. So this is where our campus looks like. I don't know if any of you have ever been to Boston before, but we are located right in the middle of downtown Boston. So you can see, say, if we go to 10 West and Modern Resident and Modern uh, Theater right over here, we're located right in the theater district of Boston, right next to the Paramount Theater and the Opera House right over there. So a very, very, very centralized location. And who knows, you might be walking down the street of Sergeant Hall one day and a parade breaks out because the Patriots maybe won the Super Bowl that year, or like the Red Sox won or anything like that. All the teams take their parades right down the center of our street. So it's a really cool opportunity for students to take advantage of that. Or one day you could be sitting at the top of Nathan Miller Residence Hall, having a good time, hanging out with some of your friends, going to a 360 view, and then you can actually get some beautiful skyline shots of the city of Boston right there. Again, at this point, if you have any, any questions, please feel free to type in the question and answer box for me. I'm more than happy to answer any question I possibly can for y'all. And right over here is where the Massachusetts State House is, so super easy for our students to access. The T, which is basically our underground subway system, one of the hubs, Park Street, is right over here. So this can take students all the way up to the TD Garden right up here where the Boston Bruins and the Boston Celtics play all the way out down this way where you can go all the way out to a town called Newton or even for or even like as close as going to Fenway Park maybe to catch a Red Sox game one time or going down to where the Boston Marathon finish line is if the marathon's running that day probably one of the best days to be in the city for there you can swing right up to the north end find some of the best Italian food you've ever had in your life I can guarantee it and then right over here is one of our newest residence halls that we have on campus, One Quarter Street. It's funny calling it the newest residence hall because it's new to us, but it's one of the oldest buildings in the city of Boston. It was built in the 1800s as the first skyscraper, and it's located right next to the old Massachusetts State House. So that seal right there is actually where the Boston Massacre happened. So our students are living right next to all this history. It's just such a fantastic location to be in. And we have our own gymnasium on campus too. This is the Ridgeway Building. So this is our fitness center. It's open to every single student. It's totally free to use. It's a great way to stay fit, blow off some steam between classes. It's a great place to go. And we also have our basketball court right over here where our basketball and volleyball teams play. And I believe this is actually where we have our varsity weight room too for our varsity athletes. Just to show off some more of our uh, sports complexes, Right over here, we have our East Boston Sports Complex. We see our baseball field and our soccer field right over there. It's super easy for students to access. All you gotta do is go right up here to Government Center. It's gonna take you right under the river right over here and bring you right next to Logan International Airport, which is where our fields are actually located. So again, right, and like just to point out some key places where students gain internships too, right over here is the Financial District. Right up here is Mass General Hospital, where a lot of our students who are interested in biology and the health sciences end up going. And right up here is where we have North Station, which is also the TD Garden, where the Boston Bruins and the Boston Red Sox end up playing. Again, just phenomenal opportunities for students to gain internship experiences at. So I'm going to change off of this super quick just because I like to show one more thing, just because I don't know if students have gotten to see it yet. So I'm gonna swap my share once again. And I'm going to go to this PowerPoint slide, which right here is gonna show all the majors that we offer at Suffolk that I was talking about. So we get everything from accounting and advertising to interior design, to theater, to studio art. There's so many opportunities for students to get involved in. And you can see a list of our minors right over here too. 
If any of these stick out to you, if you have any questions about them, please, please, please feel free to put, feel free to put it right in the question and answer box, but take some time to look through it, see what some of the opportunities are and what majors might end up sticking out to you. Awesome, so I'm gonna swift swap my share one more time and I'm just gonna go right to my contact sheet. So right over here with this gorgeous picture of me, we have my admissions, uh, my contact information right over here. My name is Patrick Dean. My email is pdean2 at suffolk.edu. If you have any, any, any questions whatsoever, whether it be about, I wanna know a little bit more about this program. What does the application look like? I need help on my application. I need help on my essay. I don't really know what to do for my essay. Please, please, please feel free to ask me any questions you might want to. Just to kind of mention some, common questions that I get all the time. Um, probably the biggest question that I always get is what's your biggest piece of advice for students applying to college? For that, I always give two main pieces of advice. Number one, know you're the university you're applying to. Be, again, like I said in my presentation, academics is the cornerstone and the key to any college experience. But the experiences there and your comfort on campus is absolutely huge too. If you don't feel comfortable on campus and you're not in an environment where you want to be in, you're not going to want to take those opportunities. You're not going to want to thrive on the campus. So always, always, always take a look and see what campus you like. Suffolk is not a traditional campus. We're located right in the middle of the city and we're very, very urban. For students who are looking for a traditional college experience with a bunch of buildings surrounding a quad in the center and you're very isolated in that environment, Suffolk might not be the best choice for you. But if you're looking for a real city aspect, if you're looking to get involved, and if you're really looking for those opportunities right at your doorstep, Suffolk might be a fantastic fit for you. So always, always, always look at the fit and see how you would feel on campus. And when you're going through your application, absolutely take the essay seriously. Because when I'm reading an application, the college essay is the only chance I ever get to actually know who you are and get to know a little bit about you from your own mouth. So write about something that's meaningful to you. I've read essays anywhere from like, you know, this big event happened in my life and this is how it changed me to, you know, this is my t favorite TV show or this is my favorite movie. And this is why it's my favorite movie or favorite, favorite TV show. This is what it means to me. This is why I wanted to go into business. I was an athlete, I got injured, but this is how I came back. Or I even had one great essay from um, one, of a, one of a football player who tore his ACL. And once he tore his ACL, he got super, super, super involved in theater and started doing a lot of backstage production, ended up actually going through and acting on theater. And now he wants to do theater as his major. So seeing that transition was phenomenal to see and his essay was perfect about that. So I always love that. Um, some other questions I usually get asked is like, what are some traditions on campus and what are some great opportunities? Well, one of my favorite traditions is um, when we have convocation. So that's when all the first year students head right down the street to the Tremont Temple. Um, our president ends up giving a big speech to all the students and it's just a really great time to kind of welcome everybody to the university and let you know this is Suffolk University. This is what we're all about here. We're so happy to have you on campus. The engagement fair is another one of my favorites for students getting involved. And the Boston, uh, Boston Marathon Day is always a great day to be in the city. We don't have classes that day just because we want you to go outside and we want you to gain that experience of being in the city on the marathon. So going down, going to check out the Red Sox game on Patriots Day, it's, it's just the best time to be in the city and go to our athletics events too. They're so, so, so much fun. And since we are D3, many of the student athletes, you're gonna end up knowing them in your classes and you're gonna end up being friends with them. So it's, it's just created such a great environment where you can all get together, be with some of your friends, go support your friends in their games and just like show some of your Suffolk pride. So that's always some of my favorite things that we have on campus. Those are usually the two biggest questions that I get asked. And just to add one more piece of advice too, before I field any questions, I don't see any questions popping up. So if you have any, please share them at this time. But one of the last pieces of advice that I wanna to give to you is apply to a diverse range of schools. Like I said about finding the fit, always, always, always apply to a diverse range of schools. Apply to those schools that you know you're gonna get into and apply to those schools that you know I might maybe have a shot at getting into, but I wanna try it and see because you never know, because some of those reach schools you might get into and they might offer you a phenomenal package. And when you thought you might never be going there, you can absolutely go there. So always, always, always apply to a spectrum of schools. That goes for cost too. So you're gonna to wanna to apply to schools that are both affordable and are both a little bit pricey too. For, ex like, for example, like I was talking about with Suffolk, 
the, the price that we have as a ticket price is not the price that you're going to end up paying. Your financial aid, your um, merit scholarships, everything like that is going to come into play. And all of that is going to determine what you actually pay. So the ticket price is almost never what you're going to pay. So don't be afraid to apply on a spectrum of cost for schools too. And probably my last biggest piece of advice before I send it back to ThriveScan is please, 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 please utilize your admissions counselors. We are admissions counselors. So we're here to help you as much as we possibly can and counsel you through the admissions process. My least favorite day on the job is when I have to deny a student to the university. I don't like doing that and I don't wanna do that. I wanna do everything that I possibly can to help you get into Suffolk University and help you with everything that I possibly can. So I just kind of want to end it with saying thank you again so much for taking time out of your day to stop by and learn a little bit more about Suffolk University. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions at all, and I'm going to pass it off to StriveScan now. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you to our presenter, and thank you to all of you for attending this evening. I'm just going to quick share my screen one last time. So when you close out this window there is going to be a super quick four question survey that pops up and we would greatly appreciate it if you would just fill that out you can also sign up for any more sessions that are happening this week at cacro.org c-a-c-r-a-o.org and this recording is going to be available within about a week on that same website Again, cacro.org, C-A-C-R-A-O.org. So you can feel free to go back to this session and uh, watch it again or share it with your friends if they were not able to attend live. Thanks everyone and hope you have a wonderful evening.